in my day to day practice, I often meet patient parties who come with their child and asks me, sir, will you do a phimosis or circumcision operation by microsurgery? In turn, I ask these ladies, was your child delivered through microsurgery? Now here is the fallacy. What is microsurgery? Everyone wants microsurgery, but they do not know what is microsurgery. So what should we do? Hello friends. This is Dr. Orgo Basu, gastro and cancer surgeon, welcoming you all to a very interesting episode of your own YouTube channel Arogdom, where we discuss various gastro cancer and surgery related problems and try to help our patients and viewers with accurate and state of the art medical guidance even at personal level. The word microsurgery is not very new. It has come into practice for more than 40 to 50 years right now. How? What does microsurgery means? Microsurgery means a surgical procedure where we are utilizing a microscope to enlarge or enhance the image to magnify the image so that we can work easily on miniature structures. But what people uh, think about microsurgery? People think that microsurgery is a surgery where there are less cuts, less bleeding, less pain and patient goes to home in no time. That is not the exact scenario and people most commonly think that microsurgery is applicable only for gallbladder, appendix, hernia and so on and so forth general surgeries. Even I see uh, people who come to me for drainage of a perianal abscess asks me to drain perianal abscess by microsurgery. I don't know how. So here are some common myths and facts that we have to break. Microsurgery is a type of surgery where we are using microscopes or distant telescopic instruments where we can see the actual field of operation with the help of telescopes and we can operate it or we can operate on that field with a few instruments. Now it is applicable for ear surgeries as well. Perforated ear drums can also be repaired with the help of a microscope. Uh, uh, mastoidectomies are operations which are performed for collection of fluid in the middle ear cavity by ENT surgeons. That is also performed with the help of microscope. So that is another kind of microsurgery. Eye surgeries routinely and regularly require microscope. So that is also another kind of microsurgery. Most commonly, people think that gallbladder is performed through microsurgery. Now, it's true. Whenever these microsurgeries were performed first by Mouhe in Paris, the concept of microsurgery spread like wildfire. In India even, Dr. Palani Velu started these uh, microsurgery, all sorts of general and GI surgeries by microsurgery, it spread like wildfire. Now you have to think what is microsurgery and how we should use the boon of microsurgery judiciously. But always think open surgery is the mother of all surgeries. Whenever microsurgery fails, a surgeon has to come back to his basics to perform open surgery. So nowadays in case of general surgeries and GI surgeries, even in cancer surgeries, we try to perform microsurgeries because less number of cuts less number of pores, less bleeding, the, people, uh, the patient gets back to uh, his feet in no time, can uh, go back to home and join his or her job within a very less period. So uh, that can give her a shorter recovery period. But we should not compromise with the surgical safety while doing microsurgery. Please listen to the video till the very end so that you don't miss any vital point and at last where I will share with you the links how you can get in touch with me and get personalized advice and guidance. Now we will go to the treatment and further discussions part but before that if you are enjoying the show and agar aapko koi benefit mil raha hai to please ye channel ko subscribe kar lijiye and bell icon ko press kar dijiye so that you will get notification every time we post a video and this will give me and my team a huge inspiration for our hard work. Thank you.
Now, without any further delay, let's dive deep into the problem and how we are going to tackle it. Let's come to the general and GI surgery part first. What is microsurgery or laparoscopy in general or GI surgery? In this kind of microsurgery or laparoscopy, whenever we are entering into the abdomen, it is called either laparoscopy or laparotomy. What is laparoscopy? Whenever we are putting in some scope or telescope inside the abdomen, it is known as laparoscopy. When, are we, when we are opening the abdomen by conventional open method, it is known as laparotomy. Now in laparotomy, gut handling is more, the recovery time is more, bleeding is more and the patient takes a considerable time to get back to his or her normal routine activities. But in laparoscopy, the patient gets back to his or her normal activities within a very short period of time. But you have to keep in mind that all surgeries cannot be done by laparoscopy or microsurgeries. All surgery should not be done by laparoscopy or microsurgery. That totally depends on the discretion and experience of the surgeon. Whatever he uh, thinks best, he will do for the patient. Like in most of the gallbladder patients, we can operate the gall gallbladder through laparoscopy or microsurgery, which is done by two ports, three ports, four ports, or even very experienced uh, uh, gastro surgeons can perform it through a single port also. But whenever all these procedures fail, like the patient is having a Mirigi syndrome, a contracted gallbladder, a gallbladder that has formed a lump in the upper abdomen, all surgeons have to come back to their basics to open surgeries. Now, how do we perform laparoscopy? In laparoscopy, first we put carbon dioxide gas inside the patient's tummy and convert it into a balloon. First we give 5 or 6 or 7 liters of gas according to the amount of according to the height, weight and girth of the patient and make his or her abdomen tight so that we can create a field to work where we will put our 2 or 3 or 4 instruments through small pores uh, on the skin of the patient. These small holes are called ports. Now these number of ports vary according to the experience of the surgeon, according to the expertise of the surgeon and according to the surgeon's choice. We can uh, perform almost all gastro surgeries, all abdominal surgeries through laparoscopy but according to the merit of the case. Cancer surgeries can also be performed by laparoscopy but that depends on the experience and expertise of the surgeon. When we are doing a cancer surgery, the more important thing is to remove the cancer in entirety. Whether I am performing a cancer surgery through a few ports is not important. Whether I can remove the cancer entirely or not through laparoscopy is important. Now whenever we are dealing the patient with laparoscopy, we can make a few number of ports and through these ports, we insert our instruments through which we operate. This is normal conventional laparoscopy. Now what we call a robotic surgery is also another higher modification of common microsurgery. All these are microsurgeries. Now in robotic surgery, conventionally people think that the operation is done by a robot. Not at all. The robot is meant by a surgeon. In conventional laparoscopy, the surgeon is by the side of the patient with his team members and he is operating through his instruments which are inserted through the ports into the patient's tummy. But in robotic surgery, the robot uh, also has similar arms which are inserted into the patient's tummy the same way in a lapar conventional laparoscopic procedure. But here the surgeon is not by the side of the patient. He is sitting in a distant console and he has some video game like uh, moving objects in his or her hands in his or her console by which he is moving his instruments. Here the robot is not operating. Here the surgeon is driving the car. The surgery is performed by the surgeon only. He is taking help of the robot which has seven degrees of freedom like a human hand. In a laparoscopic instrument, 
you have two or three degrees of freedom. What are degrees of freedom? It means how much you can move your hand or you can move your instruments in how many directions. In a robotic uh, instrument, you can move your instrument in seven directions, just like a human hand. That is the difference. So this is another kind of microsurgery which we perform in our day-to-day -day basis. The main problem with robotic surgery is the cost. Now, uh, gallbladder surgery, uh, uh, laparoscopic cholecystectomy is the gold standard. Maybe in 10 to 15 years of time, robotic surgery will be the gold standard. But that time is yet to come because of the uh, cost factor. Now, the another thing about microsurgery is that we can perform these things for piles also. In piles cases, we do PPH or procedure for prolapsed hemorrhoidopexy where we perform microsurgery through the patient's rectum or anus. There is no external hole at all. We perform surgeries through the patient's rectum by using a specialized gun or stapler through which we perform the hemorrhoidectomy or hemorrhoidectopexy, hemorrhoidopexy procedures. But there is no external scar. Now the problem is whenever a patient comes, he always asks for microsurgery. Even patients come to us for doing radical mastectomy surgeries for breast cancer through microsurgery. Now that is not possible. Microsurgery is a procedure where we are inserting some instruments inside a hollow cavity like the patient's chest cavity, like the patient's abdominal cavity where we are putting in some air or some other kind of gas, we are creating a surgical field and then we are performing the operation. In case of chest, we do one lung ventilation. We just deflate a patient's one lung and keep the patient's ventilating by the other lung and we operate on the patient's deflated lung or esophagus or food pipe or some other kind of organs through the space created by the deflated lung. That is also another kind of microsurgery. Whenever we are doing, taking help of microscope in a surgery, it can be called a microsurgery. But that is not applicable to all the places in the body. In case of open surgeries, there are some places where you cannot do any kind of microsurgery because there is no hollow cavity. So how is that possible? So we have to keep this thing in mind. Often patients go on marketing with doctors who will do microsurgery, who will do microsurgery, who will do microsurgery without knowing what is microsurgery. I have seen patients who have come to me for a below knee amputation for a cancer uh, affecting his, uh, his right uh, lower limb and he is asking for amputation through microsurgery. Now, how is that possible? It is not possible. Be sensible. Ask for microsurgery or laparoscopy to your surgeon when it deems fit. Your surgeon is the best judge whether microsurgery can be done or not. If it is an abdominal or thoracic surgery, he will definitely go for laparoscopy. Everyone nowadays wants to give his or her patient standard of care through the standard treatment procedures. But if someone asks to do a caesarean section through a microsurgery, that is, what should I say? <laughs> so, uh, so the take home message uh, from today's video is that ask for microsurgery, but be judicious and have faith on your surgeon. Let him decide whether it is possible through microsurgery or not. If he thinks he can do it by microsurgery, he will. If he thinks that no, a conventional open surgery will be the best possible route for this patient, for the best interest of the patient, please have faith on him. You can get connected with me and follow my posts, videos and blogs in my social handles given in the description box just below. If you want a personal consultation with me, please WhatsApp or call in the following numbers. My team members will personally get in touch with you as soon as possible.